Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Romel, private investigator. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, the day is going as you uh, hopefully have planned. And uh, what I'd like to do today is give you some information that uh, may very well be helpful in the event you have uh, a family, uh, children, uh, different relatives, uh, uh nieces, nephews, and all that sort of thing. There's something that's going on with the uh, young people. It's been going on for a while now. Um, it's somewhat of uh, an alert to hopefully protect them against some degree of criminal prosecution. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Unfortunate, but yes, criminal prosecution. How easy it is to get tangled up in something criminal uh, without always being very, uh, 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 well, really knowing about it or being aware of it uh, possibly beginning to happen. So I want to say this to you. You can't underestimate the uh, police. Uh, they don't do everything uh, the way uh, many of us would, would probably like things to be done. Certainly it's a work in progress. There's no question there in uh, some of the uh, agencies. Then, of course, the other side of the coin, you, you, you see the opposite. You know, well, you know, listen, good and bad and everything in life, no one thing is, uh, is perfect. But nonetheless, taking care of the young people is, is a very important thing. You know, so what's going on is uh, some of these things that happen, is this youthful exuberance or is it something further, perhaps even something more sinister? So we hear a lot about gangs. We hear a lot about drugs. We hear uh, a lot about uh, people assaulting the elderly. A lot of those things intertwine and do engage activities by young people, teenagers upwards of, let's say, near 30, 25, 26, all up in that range. So it's important for you to get this information and guess who's gonna give it to you? I'm gonna help you understand how easy, and I emphasize the word easy, how easy it is to get in trouble. One of the laws that's really, in, in a lot of the big cities, one of the laws that's really been uh, taking a lot of young people virtually by storm. Every now and then you'll hear something about an arrest uh, with the police in, involving several several young people, um, anywhere from 20, sometimes 30, 40. I've even had cases with as many as 90 some odd people uh, indicted on conspiracy charges. Conspiracy is what I'll be talking about. Conspiracy. So what is conspiracy? We know what it sounds like, but what, what really is it? So when we look at conspiracy, here's a general understanding, uh, enough for you to work with, uh, of conspiracy. First degree conspiracy. That's a, that's a class A felony. In the state of New York, in some other states, it may be slightly different, but I, I doubt much. I doubt much. In any event, uh, conspiracy is where you have one or more persons who make some sort of a, an agreement, conversation, if you will, to commit a crime. One or more persons who make an agreement to commit a crime. Now, first degree would be uh, where you have someone who's 18 or older and they conspire with someone who's under the age of 16 and it's associated with uh, a major crime, perhaps murder, arson, kidnapping, some major drug trafficking, things of uh, that sort. And of course, if convicted, uh, they, stand a, they stand a very likely chance of... Um, uh, those uh, sentences consistent with actual murder, actual arson, kidnapping, and so forth. And in some cases, that may very well be a life sentence. Something you need to know. Something you need to be 
uh, aware of. So how does this sort of evolve? Well, listen, you ever heard the expression, big brothers watching you? Basically, when it initially came out, this was all about cameras, cameras beginning to be in more and more and more places. Well, it's gotten further than that. Not only is Big Brother watching you, but so are the police. From one uh, municipality to the next, there may be a different name for it, gang unit, etc., and so forth. They're watching you. They keep an eyes on you. And so what happens is in, in that process, what's being watched are groups. Now, they could be actual bloods. They could be actual crips. They could be some derivation of that sex, as the, they sometimes are referred to, or crews. Or, uh, there's so many names out now. I can go on and on and on. At the end of the day, you know what I'm talking about. And that's curious. That's very curious. And, of course, this is a part of their, um, uh, their intelligence with respect to trying to minimize crime. Understandably so. However, how do the kids get trapped up in it? Not just kids, but young adults. How do they find themselves trapped up in it? Where does the confusion come in? How does this thing uh, get to the point where people are actually being arrested and no crime committed? No crime committed, presumably. The conspiring in and of itself is in fact a crime. So let me help you with this. You have a conversation. Uh, let's say you got a guy about 18 years of age or so, and there's someone uh, younger. Let's make it easy. Let's make it a family. Someone's cousin gets shot. Uh, there's an 18-year-old in the household, and there's a 15-year-old in the household. They're upset that their cousin got shot. The word is... Uh, John Doe shot the cousin. The word is strong that John Doe shot the cousin. What was the reason? Because he felt like it. That's why he did it. He felt like it. What? What you gonna do? That type of uh, disposition. So, of course, the family's concerned. So what the two Brothers decide to do, they have a conversation. We have to get him back. We have to show him he can't take anybody in our family out. These conversations do take place, mind you. And so now it gets even further. How are we going to set this up? Okay. Um, let's try to make this look like an accident. Well, no, uh, Maybe we ought to just shoot him like he shot our cousin. Yeah, you, you're right. That's probably going to be a lot quicker and a lot easier. So what's the next step? The next step is, well, you got Well, neither one of us have a gun. Listen, let's go buy a gun off the street from uh, you know who. Okay, cool, cool. So they buy an illegal gun. Now, what happens is, you know, young people, they, they like to talk, talk a little too much. If this is mentioned to another friend. The friend is, are you really going to buy a gun from him? You think that's a good thing to do? Well, we got to take care of our business. So what happens is, he's a, another party that witnesses the fact that they purchased the gun. How did they purchase the gun? The younger person had some money put away. The older person had a job. They put their money together. They purchased the gun. They also had to buy uh, ammunition for the gun. They actually drew up where they would hide in the uh, process of committing this offense. And they agreed that they would do it together. The younger brother was to create some degree of distraction uh, to the uh, person that shot their cousin. So 
this starts out, it's put in play. They go out to the location where everything is supposed to happen. And then what happens is the younger brother begins to feel a little uncertain, gets a little quirky, gets a little uh, frightened, and decides to run away from it. Now what happens is the actual crime of murder, shooting, intentionally shooting this person that had shot the cousin, it hasn't taken place. However, a crime was committed. That crime having been conspiracy. And in this particular case, conspiracy with respect to a class A felony, which is first degree conspiracy. I mean, that's how easy it is. And so my well, let's take another another example. You have uh, you have a group of guys. There's sometimes uh, some of these groups that are referred to as gangs, they're actually a group of guys. Maybe they play basketball together, baseball together, softball together, some sport together, football perhaps, and they kind of want to look out for each other because they know of some other gangs that um, tend to, let's say, pick on the younger kids take what they can take from them. They get a new watch, the watch is gone, all that sort of thing. And these things do happen in various areas. So they want to protect themselves. They, they, they make, make a group. And in that group, they hang out a lot. They kind of stick with each other because if they're separate, they become subject to whatever somebody else feels like doing to them. And as the police are looking at this, they don't know. They don't know. They know what they see. They see this large group parading around here, parading around there. And young people are always joking, doing something a little silly. Some of those things are perceived as more than uh, what they actually are. And here's where it gets even heavier. Young people grow up. In areas where you got guys that are committing all types of crime in and out of jail, it's the next door neighbor. Uh, it's, it's the guy on the fifth floor. One bad brother, the other brother's cool in the gang. They all know each other. They play basketball together. They go to parties together. They do the weed together. Other things too, probably. A little drinking, etc., beers, so forth and so on. Girls, they chase the girls together, you see. And so what happens is, as the police are looking at someone they know that is, let's say, into uh, drug trafficking, and they're aware of that, and they look at the different people that they interact with in some degree of consistency, and then what happens, those people become subject. They become very subject. When there's an arrest made, these people are rounded up. They're rounded up. And what do young people do? They talk, they talk, they talk, and they talk some more. You see? So this is, this is a concern. So some of you say, well, gee, well, you know, kids are always talking about something. That doesn't mean they intend to do it. Well, they don't always have to do it. It depends on how far they go with respect to doing it. So we say... Uh, there's a conversation among four or five young people, and the conversation is about robbing a liquor store. Man, they must make a lot of money at the liquor store because there are lines that run outside the door. If we can catch that guy when he's closing, you know, we can make a lot of money, man. Everybody's wearing masks now. All we got to do is put on a mask. Nobody's going to be suspect. You know, maybe we can pull it off. Uh, uh, Charlie's Charlie's able to use his dad's car. His dad, you know, we could we could use his dad's car and get away quick. Group of guys talking about this, and then what happens is one of the guys, yeah, man, that that would be good. What if we get caught? Oh yeah, I haven't thought about that, man. Yeah, never mind. That's all right, man. You know, forget it, man. I ain't you know I ain't I ain't going to jail for nobody. So even though there was a 
discussion. This is what was what's referenced to as a mere discussion. That's not something that's going to put him in jeopardy. But, however, contrary to that, if in fact one of them, all it takes is one, one of them decides, hey, listen, we can actually do this. Um, I'm going to go and just kind of check out when's the best time to do it. I'm going to do some watch out for a few days. In addition to the uh, watch out, and I, you know, I'll draw this up and I'll put the timelines in there so we can figure out when we're going to do what we're going to do. And um, we're going to need something to frighten him. So, um, you know, I'm bring my I'm gonna bring my knife, and uh, you know you can you can get your knife. And uh, anybody have a gun? Okay, so I can I can get a gun. So you're doing something in furtherance. You're doing something in furtherance of the conversation. Now, even more so, again, you go out to the scene. You get everybody out there. Everybody wants to kind of look at the lay of the land so they could see what role that they play. Again, in furtherance, once this information gets out, this in and of itself is a crime. Conspiracy, conspiracy, something for you to be uh, mindful of. There's an old saying, be careful of the company you keep. And, and, and we've all been there. We've had people that we really, really like. Sometimes they're just funny as hell. You know, our favorite, our favorite friend in the classroom, biggest crook. Biggest crook in the neighborhood, but he's so damn funny. And for sometimes for the young ladies, oh, he is so fine. <laughs> Come on, don't tell me I'm pulling teeth here. But this happens. This is what a lot of people find themselves caught up in when they're young. Some degree of youthful, youthful exuberance, but then it tends to go further, especially when it comes to the drugs. Everybody wants to be like, let's say, somebody else who they perceive to be cool or has a certain amount of swag and all that sort of thing. So again, you have to be mindful of how easy it is. And once upon a time, at a little fight in the neighborhood, just a little, a little extra note, a little fight in the neighborhood. Police come, break it up, tell everybody to go to their parents. Not a big deal. Doesn't happen anymore. Fight in the neighborhood, don't matter who started it. Both of your butts are going to jail. And I'm not just talking about teenagers. As people are up in age, uh, this is true also. Whole different ball game. You want to keep your children safe. You want to keep your friends safe. Share this video. Think about what I'm saying. I don't make this stuff up. I wish I could. I'm not that talented. This is real. And it happens more often than many of you would think. People in jail who had no, no bad intentions at all. They just got caught up in the sweep. And the broom is big. Dream with purpose, act with intent, share these videos, hit the uh, notification bell. Some of you seem to miss that. Hit that notification bell. You know when my videos are coming out. Most importantly, subscribe, dream with purpose, act with intent. All be well. Take care.